Okay, Drink With James, episode 109. This is a first. Look, there was a first time for everything. We're 109 episodes in, and I think this is my first one without alcohol. Is that true? Yes, sir. Um, we didn't have the lens that we shoot it with on Friday and didn't, couldn't get it. So it is Monday morning, 10 a.m., and even I have standards. I am not drinking at 10 a.m. I love y'all, but we're doing this one sober. This is some iced coffee. I was thinking this morning on my way over, like imagine if this was the first time a lot of you saw me completely sober, and I was just like completely boring, and I was just like, hello, welcome to Drink With James, episode 109. And I was just like very sad, I was just like, Today we're talking about something, um, but I'm not, I'm not that much different sober and drunk and I have an incredible ability to get very drunk and not appear so. I feel very proud that I'm not an angry or mean drunk, that's the worst kind. Um, and I think then the next worst is like sloppy and annoying. Um, None of those things. And I have one of those internal clocks that like, you'll take a sip and realize like, that is your last sip. And then I just like beeline straight to bed. I just will leave, I'll kick people out of my house. I'll be like, everyone out immediately. I don't care if you're mid drink, you're leaving, I'm going to sleep. Um, which is an important tool for survival. If you're, if you're going to try and, you know, continue to drink, exercise, run a business, have friends, read, you know, improve yourself, all of those things. Where am I going on about? Listen, I'm back in the conference room. Last week I was on a beach in Anguilla, in Anguilla, in Anguilla. In I went there for four days. I actually still don't know how to pronounce it. Um, it was fantastic. I'm sure you all saw it. Um, the trip was amazing. The Four Seasons was great. If you guys haven't been down there um, and you have the ability to travel, uh, one, it's beautiful down there. Two, all those islands in that area of the world were devastated by the hurricane. Their only real source of, of their only like revenue source for these countries is tourism. Um, people aren't going down there because they think that they were destroyed. Um, and while there are far fewer trees, far fewer palm trees, everything looks a little bit scruffier. A lot of the buildings don't have windows or doors. Um, it is, you know, something small that you can do when we were down there, everyone was thanking us for coming, um, because us coming down and showing that the island is still beautiful and it's still inhabitable and you can still go down there and have a great vacation. Hopefully we'll push people more to go down there. That's the only way they're going to recover. Uh, we sent a bunch of aid down there and I know there's a lot of groups working to rebuild these islands, but end of the day, they just need people to come down and spend their money. Um, so maybe, you know, to keep on trend, don't go to Tulum, book a trip to the BVI's, book a trip to Anguilla, go to Puerto Rico, go somewhere that has been affected by these storms and spend your money. That's, a, that's a, what we call a win-win. You get to go on vacation while helping a local economy that has been decimated by this storm. Tulum, the only thing Tulum could be decimated by is like a shortage of crystals or fucking matcha or something. Um, but I don't think there's gonna be a crystal or matcha shortage anytime soon. So divert those funds somewhere that you can do a little good while getting a tan. End of story, end of rant. We're gonna move on. It's Monday morning, we got a lot to do. So I'm not gonna ramble. Question number one is, how do you respond to negative comments on sponsored or non-sponsored posts? Delete, response, no response, other. I think we've touched on this before, but it's, it's been a while. Um, and I think the last question was more on like haters. Uh, negative comments are going to happen. Um, you're gonna get pushback from things. I think you need to kind of first bucket something into a does this need a response or does it not? You know, something like, hey, your hair looks stupid. I don't think that just needs a response. Like people will say mean, cruel things all the time. It's the internet. It can be an incredible and shitty place at the same time. And I think that if people are just trolling you and just saying like, you know, nice shirt asshole, 
I don't really feel like that's something you need to respond to. Um, you can delete the post and block the person, and that's just like, hey, I don't need this in my life. Delete and block, um, move on. I, I think that by responding to that or turning your like audience onto that person, it just creates this nasty thing. It is nice to push back at those people and be like, hey, I'm a person here, like that hurts my feelings too. Um, but they are posting that to get a response from you, to get a rise from you. This is what trolls do. Um, so in that case, I would probably just walk away. Um, delete and block, that's what I would do. Um, if it is something that feels like it needs a response. Let's say you are working with a brand and somebody says, hey, doesn't that brand test on animals? I'm disappointed that you're working with them. You know, I would, one, if you're working with a brand that you think might cause some questions or some backlash, it's always nice to talk to the brand about that. Ask them, you know, hey, I've been known for being like, eco-conscious and eco-friendly in what I do um, and frankly I'm concerned about working with you because of these things and my audience will be thinking this and this and this. The brand will probably have a good response. They say, oh, absolutely hear you. You know, years ago we used to do things this way. We've since changed. We do things this way now. We're eco-friendly. We don't test on animals. Whatever it is. Um, so if you feel like you're concerned, you should be able to, to think, what would people say? Um, is this going to create any kind of drama or is anyone going to raise an eyebrow and say, why are you working with that brand? Ask them for a response. I think if you can be upfront with it and get ahead of it, it's better. Um, it's like that, you know, that scene from the last scene in Eight Mile when like Eminem's doing his like freestyle and he just like lists out every insult that the guy was going to use against him and like turns that around. It's almost like doing that, but for working with a brand and saying like, hey, it might surprise some of you that I'm working with this brand. Here's why I am. Here's why I think they're doing something great, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's the best thing. So to just to totally get ahead of any kind of confusion that it could create. But if somebody brings up a valid point, it is worth acknowledging that criticism. And if you have a response that is honest um, and explains what is happening or why you did this or whatever it might be, um, I think it's worth, it could be worth throwing that out there. Um, if it's on a sponsored post, again, you just, you want to be careful because you don't want the comments to start becoming an argument about this brand that's not going to look good. Um, you know, sometimes you can take it off the comment section and DM the person. Um, again, I, I would always like, prefer, you know, sometimes you wish your audience, like if they were upset with something, just sent you a DM and be like, hey, what's going on there? So you guys could have a private conversation about it. Um, but what you don't want to happen is for those comments to turn into like a back and forth about the validity of you working with a brand on a sponsored post, because there's no way you come out looking good from that. Um, so it's tough. It's tough and it's case by case basis. I just read or just finished rereading um, the classic how to win friends and influence people uh, from like the 1930s or 40s. And you know, there's a chapter in there that essentially says like, you can't win arguments. Like it's impossible to, it is impossible to win an argument. Either you don't win the argument or you do win the argument and you look like an asshole. Those are the options, you know? And so I see oftentimes when somebody leaves a negative response in an influencer's comment and then that influencer like gets really, really nasty. And again, the, the, the commenter started it by saying something nasty to the influencer, but you are the one with the platform. And I think you need to, to act in accordance with the, that platform and you need to rise above those things and not bring yourself down and get marred in like this stupid argument in your comments section. Um, so I am always a little disappointed when I see an influencer, you know, responding back to a negative comment and then s essentially sicking their audience on this person as well um, because it just turns into this gross mob thing. If you don't like it, delete it and block them, move on with your life. Um, because if, if I learned anything from that, that book, 
I thought that was really interesting, the idea that you can't win. So even if you make that person look like an idiot, what do you do? Now you have used your platform to make someone look stupid. Congratulations. Like, do you feel better? It's like if somebody bumped into you on the street and you like on purpose and you broke their nose, like, do you look better for that or do you look like an asshole? You look like an asshole, just let it go. Uh, that would be my suggestion. Put the ego aside, um, move on. It, it's, it's, you know, let's say you get a thousand comments a week and one of them is negative. Who the fuck cares? Like if you don't have thick enough skin to deal with one negative comment in every thousand, then you are in the wrong business. Like just move on. Um, because by responding, you give them a platform. Now they have taken over your post. Now the post is not about the post, the post is about them. Um, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. You wouldn't give a post away for free to a brand, you know, necessarily. So why are you giving it away to this troll who like said you look ugly? It's just not even worth it, so. Question number two is, what are your thoughts on backing out of paid, contracted, brand-sponsored posts? That's a, that's a mouthful, huh? Paid, contracted, brand-sponsored posts if you feel you're being taken advantage of by the brand. Um, do everything you can do to not back out of a post, first of all. That shouldn't really be seen as an option. Um, if you feel like you're being taken advantage of, have that conversation. Say, hey, I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. And, if you do everything right, okay, and, and we've talked about all of these steps, right, and, and you have a contract, you can't get taken advantage of if you have a contract. You have a contract. You say, I'm doing this for this. So if they say, I want this, you say, okay, cool, that's 500 more dollars. You know, you, if you have a contract, by nature of the contract, you can't be taken advantage of. Um, if you don't have a contract, uh, and the brand keeps adding things on, then just respond and say, hey, I'm super excited about this deal. Feeling like a lot of stuff that's getting piled on that wasn't in the original scope, um, and I'm starting to feel uncomfortable with it. Is there more budget to do this because this is not what we agreed to? If they say, there's no new budget, and can you just do it, and you don't feel comfortable, then say, look, I can't do that, I agreed to do I agreed to do this for this, and now you're asking this, and you're not willing to pay this, and so I can no longer do the deal. I can, I can go back and just do what we talked about for what we were, you were gonna pay me, but I can't do this for what you were gonna pay me. And that's a very simple conversation. What you cannot do is feel like you're being taken advantage of, and then just write back and throw a hissy fit and back out of the, the deal. More often than not, the brand is not meaning to take advantage of you. They're getting pressure. You don't know what is their jobs are like. They're not just trying to be an asshole. They're saying, you know, they probably have people coming in and saying, well, can't they go to this event? Can't they do this? Can't they also tag this? Can they throw another hashtag in? And maybe they don't feel confident enough to push back on their bosses. So they just say, well, maybe I'll just ask this influencer if they can do this. Now that's not right. That's not fair, but you don't accomplish anything by just you know, throwing your papers, your proverbial papers in the air, walking out of the room and be like, I fucking quit. So tell them, you know, lay it out, you know, lay it out, what you promise to do, what they're asking. Um, and if they can't meet you on those, you know, if they can't give you more money, then you can walk away respectfully. Um, but if you just walked away, not respectfully, you'll burn that bridge forever. Um, and it doesn't matter that they pile the, here's the, okay, here's the shitty thing, right? There's this term we use all the time in, in, internally when we're talking about, you know, the stuff that happens um, in the campaign. It says, it's not my fault, but it is your problem. Like, it's not my fault, but it is my problem. So if you back out, if you just say, well, I'm out, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm out of this collaboration, you're asking me to do too much, the brand is not gonna say, if you haven't had that conversation we talked about where you laid it all out, you said what you were gonna do, what they're asked, all that, they're just gonna think, what a spoiled brat, they just left me high and dry and backed out of it, the deal. They're not gonna see it from your side. So first, you have to make them see it from your side so that if you leave, they understand why you leave. Because not, if not, while it's not your fault that you're being taken advantage of, it is your problem because you look like a child, you look unprofessional, 
and untrustworthy and you're not someone they're going to work with again. So make sure you lay out the, what is happening from your point of view to make sure you're aligned on that and make sure they understand it before you back out. Um, more often than not, we have found that if you lay it out in that way, the, the brand will apologize and they'll either cough up more money or you've given them the language to go back to their bosses and say, here's why they can't do that. Do you think it could impact you negatively to work purely on content creation for a brand that's not in your aesthetic? So let's lay this out here. Let's say, yeah, you've got a brand and they want to work with you and you say, so sorry, the brand isn't really in my aesthetic and my, my followers wouldn't um, connect with it. And they say, well, can you just shoot some photos for us to use? Is that a problem? Yes and no. It depends on how what do I want to say? It depends on how careful you are with your image. Um, that brand is going to use those photos. They're going to tag you. They're going to put it in newsletters. They're going to put it in ads, potentially. It's going to kind of be all over the place. They're going to use it. That's why they're asking you to do it. Um, so it's just, are you comfortable with that living outside of your feed? Is it just that within your feed, you don't feel comfortable with it. Look, models work with brands all the time that they're not, they don't like, they don't personally connect with. Photographers shoot projects all the time that they're not necessarily proud of or brands that they don't like, um, but they're just getting paid. So there is something to just getting paid, but you just have to understand, unlike a photographer um, who probably won't be, you know, cited as who shot it everywhere. Um, you are going to be and your face is going to be everywhere and you have to think does that dilute my brand um, and is it worth if it does dilute my brand is the brand dilution worth the money that they're paying um, now that's a different story if they just want you to do flat lays or they you know or you can say can I shoot it on my friends something like that like that's a way to get around it if you are worried about your face being associated with a certain brand ask if you can shoot your friends um, ask if you can do flat lays, ask if you can do product photography, that would be a way to get around it. If you don't feel comfortable with your followers seeing an advertisement with you repping that brand, um, then don't do it because that is absolutely going to happen. Um, so always with this stuff, it's a cost benefit, you know, like, is it worth the money uh, for the you know, potential dilution of brand. Um, and that's a decision that you have to make. Yeah, I mean, if it's a brand that you like and they don't have the money, um, you could always say, you know, if, if they're, let's say you actually like a brand and they're coming in half of what your sponsored post fee is and you're more of a visual photographer. Because there's some influencers that are just, they're not trying to create editorial beautiful imagery. They're just shooting themselves on the street. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the account is about the clothes and the product and not the images, photography, creative direction. But there are influencers like, uh, you know, Olivia Lopez, Lust for Life, Lisa Dangler creates beautiful content. There are people like that, that they are a big part of their feed and their style influencers, but they also have a unique, interesting point of view. I know for a fact, Lisa, I know she creates content for brands that she is not involved in. Um, but if a brand can't meet your fee, especially if you have a big following, if you're at three, four hundred thousand, and a lot of what you're charging for is access to your followers, not access to your vision, um, then that is another way to make money. You know, by saying, okay, well, you can't afford the three and a half thousand dollar sponsored post. Totally understand that. For two grand, I'll shoot it, or for fifteen hundred dollars, I'll shoot it and send you the images. And you know, maybe not put yourself in it again because you you have to start charging for your likeness and understanding that your face and is valuable and is something that people should pay for. Also, if you're doing you know, if you're charging a brand for content creation, think about it like usage as well. They're going to use your face as an advertisement. They're going to put that into the feed via Instagram spawn, Instagram advertising. So don't think about it as just like I'm creating some photos and they're going to use them somewhere. Um, they're going to use them for advertising, charge them accordingly. Um, usually half of your rate. So I would say 
half your rate for usage, and then also think about what your fee is for actually creating the content. Um, that is all, people. It is 10.40 or so. We gotta get the day going. I hope you all have a great week. We'll see how fast Tim can turn this around, see how fast he is at editing. Um, but cheers.